Well, hi, Deanna, and welcome back to the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast. I am super thrilled to talk to you today. Thanks for having me, Emily. I'm excited to be here. Yes, we will link to the episode in the show notes because it's escaping me right now, but I know it was awesome, and I'm so glad that you and I connected and have been a part of your one of your amazing summits, and I just love everything that you're putting out into the world. I just like my sister, what do they say? Sister from another mister. (laughs) (laughs) So I would love it for those of the listeners that had did not listen to the previous episode or have no idea who you are. If you could introduce yourself and tell us a little about you and your family and kind of how you serve moms. Absolutely. Well, first, Emily, I feel the same about you. Um, So just so you know, that is a reciprocal love and relationship. And I am so happy that we have connected. And okay, so those of you who don't know me, my name is Deanna Yates. I also have a podcast called Want to Be Clutter Free. And like Emily, I help you overcome that overwhelm, right? You just getting rid of the chaos. I like to say that I like to calm the chaos because it does just feel like there's so much overwhelm. And especially now at the stage I am in my life, I'm feeling it on both ends, right? I'm feeling it from our child. She's 11 and I'm feeling it from my parents as they're getting older and approaching different stages of life. And then just myself, I feel like I'm in that middle area and letting go of all the stuff really, really helped us. And so I want to help other women and families feel that relief and um, bring back the joy, right? Just let go of all the stuff we don't need and uh, make life better. Yes. Love that. And I have definitely experienced that in my own life. I realized that in just this upcoming December and a couple months here, it'll be a decade for me kind of going on this minimalist yeah. uh, decluttering path. But as we're going to talk about in the episode today in the conversation, I still need help. <laughs> we all do. And I wanted to bring you on to chat about motivation because We always talk about, you know, we don't have the time to declutter. We don't have the time to organize. But a lot of times, even if we have like those pockets of time, we just don't have the motivation to do it. We just don't want to. There's so many other things that are more enjoyable that we could be doing or things that we just have to do, like to keep our home in order and to know where our kids are and what they're doing. And I just kind of went from the relative ease of summer to now four nights a week, just one sport, but four nights a week between the two kids. And I just felt like whiplash with like, whoa, things have just really shifted. And I am just curious, one decluttering expert to the to the other, have you ever struggled with motivation when it comes to decluttering and organizing? Like, please tell me I'm not the only one that struggles with this. You are not the only one. I'm right. Re- okay. Are, are you a human? Yes. Are you going to struggle with stuff? Heck yes. I mean, it's just how it's just how it is. Um, early in my career, I started off, um, some people know this about me. I was a personal trainer and one of the interesting things about personal training is there is no stigma about helping other trainers, right? You all then work out together. You get tips from each other. You're around each other all the time in the same gym. So you are constantly helping each other, building each other up, you know, you go to each other. If you have a question about a client who has an issue that they didn't know about, right? So yes, we all need help. We all need trainers. Coaches have coaches. And that is just one thing that we all need to know that there is not one person out there that knows everything that is good at everything. And so it is totally fine for us to be having this conversation. One declutter expert to another and, um, and for everyone else to hear because they just want to know too. And so, yes, do I struggle with motivation? all the time, all the time. And that is why I lean so hard on habits and resets and moments of pause and moments of like, okay, because I feel like I am in the same with you, right? I go through cycles. I have moments of like energy and excitement. And, you know, there's a lot of people that talk about, there's a lot of women that talk about women's cycles and how our, you know, energies ebb and flow. It is not my area of expertise, but I can say as a woman, it definitely, I feel that in my life too. So also giving myself grace and knowing that like, 
if I'm struggling and having a moment where things are not as jazzed up to just take a pause and be like, okay, maybe I will just set that off to the side today. And tomorrow I will see if I feel differently about it instead of what I used to do when I was younger and be like, you should totally be able to do this. You did this last week. Why can't you do this today? Like, what is wrong with you? Why can't you, why didn't you remember to change the laundry last week? I found that I forgot to hit the start button on the dryer. Like, and I found it the next day and I was like, Oh, gross. Okay. Rewash those. Right. Oops. No big deal. I must've gotten distracted or something happened, but like there's these little things that if I'm having a rough day, something like that could have totally just derailed me when I was younger of just like, come on, you idiot. Like, and talking to yourself in these words that you would never say to a friend. Um, so I like to maybe take a pause, think about like how I talk to myself first, but yes, long answer short, of course I struggle with motivation. We all do because that's just what life does. Life throws us curveballs. Um, my whole last month has been full, filled with all sorts of different curveballs here, there, or, you know, business related, family related work, you know, um, like nuclear family parental different, you know, friends, all sorts of stuff has been going on, but it's just kind of one of those things of just like, okay, take a deep breath, you know, put on some good music. I love to put on some good music that pumps me up when I'm having a rough day, grab a glass of wine at the end of the day and just say, we're going to try again tomorrow. Try, try to hit that reset button tomorrow. Yeah. And I think like you said, having that curiosity mindset rather than the judgmental mindset is really hard to be like, oh, well, why might I be feeling this way? <laughs> and you kind of look at the calendar and you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm this way, you know, here on my cycle or, oh, I really didn't sleep last night or, oh, this is the first glass of water that I've had the entire day. And we don't always think about those things that could be impacting our energy just kind of more generally. Um, so I feel like that's really good advice and you are going to coach me. I'm so thrilled. <laughs> so bad. But so a little bit of backstory. I got my parents story worth for oh, Mother's yes. Day, Father's Day. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. And they've answered all these questions. And then I'm like all ready to make the book and there's the option to include photos with the book. Okay. And so I asked my parents, do you have photos? Do we have photos? They say, and they <laughs> proceed to dump in a huge box of photos on, on me, not on me, but it felt like it. And yeah. it's all their childhoods. They're in their mid seventies, all the way up through my childhood. And so I did the hard work of organizing and sorting and checking with them, like, what pictures do you want and everything? And that has all been done. But now it's the actual select the photos for the book, scan the rest. And I would love to have these as Christmas presents for them. And that's where I'm at. And everything else has been more important. Everything else has taken priority, but this is important to me because I do want to complete it. And it is kind of tangentially related to decluttering because I am getting the physical stuff out, but it's just not like take it to the donation center. Like it requires some thought and work. So I am completely unmotivated day to day. I will, I will clean a toilet before I want to do anything with these photos. So help me, Deanna, help me. So what are some of your tips for finding that initial motivation? And then we're going to talk about like taking the initial steps, but like when we're just completely unmotivated to do something, even though it might be important to us, where do we start? Help me, Deanna. Yeah, no worries. All right. So I call this my clutter freedom framework and it's it's D-O-M, so at the end of freedom. So it's decide, oust, and manage. And I think we are right now in that decide phase, right? A lot of people tell you, start with your why, you know, why do you want to do this thing? And I think you already know that deep down, right? I think you've already decided like this is, well, maybe you haven't made that decision yet. That's what we're going to talk about. You've said, this is important to me. I want this to be a loving, you know, Christmas present, holiday present for my family. I know this is going to be super special and you can see why you want to do it, but you have to decide that it's going to be important. 
And so I think that's the first step is you have to say, no, I have made this decision. I'm going to have integrity with myself and I'm going to put this on my calendar. And so every week I'm going to give myself, maybe it's just an hour, maybe it's one hour a week. And so you can break that up into four 15 minute sessions. It doesn't have to be right now. It is this giant mountain. It feels unscalable. It feels so big, so daunting, so heavy, right? You already said they dumped it on me. It felt like this huge weight. So even in the words you're using, it already feels really difficult. And so we just need to break it down and you need, you're going to make that decision to say, if this is important to me, I'm putting it on my calendar. And so what I want you to do after we talk today, or you can do it right now, if you'd like is grab your phone, look through it and find three to four times. Maybe it's even just one time this next week, this first week, find one time for you to say, I'm going to pick five photos. I'm going to look through it until I find five photos, scan those five that I want for the book. And then I'm going to just turn it off. That's it. Because with story worth, that's 52, right? Because it's, or is it 50? Like maybe they give you a couple weeks off, but it's like 52 stories. So at most you're looking for 52 to 150 photos. And we need to do this by how long do they need to print it? A couple weeks. That is information I need to find out because that yes. will impact how many I'm doing at a time, I guess. Right. So we can start to then break it down, work backwards, reverse engineer. So if I want this by December 20th, cause I want to give myself a little bit of leadway. If it takes them two weeks, then that's going to be, I'm going to do some quick math in my head. Um, you know, December 8th when I need to get that done, but maybe they're going to need a couple more. Cause obviously this is a big holiday gift. So maybe I need to have it done by the end of November. So we're recording this mid-September. So that means I have about 12 to 14 weeks at most to work on this. So if I need 150 photos, but it sounds like you also are wanting to do the whole, are you trying to do the whole lot before the end of the year? Well, that's a great point, coach. <laughs> <laughs> How much of this lot are you trying to do? Yeah. Cause really my focus for the end of the year only needs to be the book but I am a perfectionist procrastinator. So it <laughs> is like, combo, isn't it? yeah, it's so yeah. fun. So it's yeah. like, I want to do it all and I want to do it right. And so I've been procrastinating because it's like, well, how can I, like you said, scale the mountain? Like I don't have all the time to scale the mountain. So maybe I need to shift the scope to, mm -hmm. I'm just looking for the photos for the book and scan those and then the rest of it, I can kind of have be a longer term project. I think that that would alleviate a lot of the anxiety for me because I'm seeing the clock and, you know, I'm seeing the calendar yeah. and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I want to be able to do this. So the reverse engineering, like sometimes I don't get to the break it down step because I'm mm -hmm. so overwhelmed, ironically, overwhelmed by the, like the scope of the project that I just kind of put it aside. And I'm like, well, I still don't know what's for dinner tonight. So that's more important than like my long-term photo project. All right. So we're going to make that priority, right? So we are going to say the project that I actually need to get done is the story worth book. If I end up scanning more photos than that, fantastic. But I want to actually take a moment. I mean, how nice is this? You've got this story and now this is also difficult because you can get hung up on this. I'm going to read the story and this is so nice. And you take this minute, you get caught up in it and you get all these feel goods, right? So you've got the feel good and you're like, oh, okay, well, I got this other stuff I got to do, you know, and it is easy then to put it off to the side. So instead of getting wrapped up in the story, try to figure out, or if your parents can help you try to figure out what are the main, like figure out the time. Who was involved? What is the story about? Instead of actually reading the whole story. So try to just scan it, get the tidbits, make little notes. I would actually do that. That's actually, if I were breaking this down myself, I would do that. I would kind of, maybe it's the first five stories. I don't know how your photos are sorted. So if it's chronologically, if you can get the stories chronologically, that's going to be much easier. 
but maybe you're making the notes on the stories as to, okay, this story from 1972, I need a photo of mom and dad at, uh, the, I don't know, in Vegas. Okay, great. Um, this story from 1985. Okay. They went to Niagara falls. Okay, great. And then you're making notes. So now you know exactly what photos you need to find. I think that's actually going to be your better approach. What do you think about that? I, I love that. And I think that will help me to kind of have it at a high level. I have sort of them chronologically to the best of my ability. Yes. <laughs> I'm like my mom in second grade and my mom in third grade. <laughs> it's like, great. was pretty tough, but I think that that would be great. And some of the threads I want to pull out from what you were saying is like, of course, like you said, kind of remembering the why, but also reverse engineering and realizing that scanning like the five photos in a day, that's enough. Because a lot of times I know you see this too, that people are like, well, if I can't spend that entire weekend decluttering my entire home, then what's the point? Like, what is this 10 minutes actually going to do? But a lot of times it's just starting and then it's like the action actually brings the motivation. Have you found that to be true in your own totally. life too? Absolutely. Yeah. And if you do five photos, that's almost 10%. So that's only like 10 sessions. And then there's going to be a time where you'll probably do more. And there might be a time where you're like, I could only find three and that's going to be fine. But if you think about like, okay, I only have to do this 10 times. That also feels a lot lighter to me. Does that feel lighter to you? Yeah, it does. Okay. And okay. I think one of the other questions that I have just about the like, okay, it's yeah. on the calendar. I blocked it in the calendar. I understand the scope. Like I know what I'm doing. And then the time comes and I'm like, oh, photos. Like, I just don't want to do it. Yeah. Why don't I go ahead and, you know, check out whatever's on Netflix today, like totally. whatever. So yeah. taking those actual steps and kind of like that, oh, I don't want to do it feeling, what are some tips to kind of help us with motivation, like in the moment to get us over the hump of like taking the action? Yes. So going back to that, yes, I'm going to answer this and that same question you had before that once you start, do you feel like the motivation comes? And I think the answer is yes, because it really is just that first tiny little hurdle. If you can get over that first tiny hurdle, you're like, oh, okay, this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It doesn't feel as bad. It's feeling lighter. You're making progress. It makes all of it feel much easier. And then you continue. So yes, let's work on getting over that first hurdle when you have it on your calendar and you go, oh, I don't want to do photos. Okay. Is there a song that really pumps you up or motivates you? Can that be part of your little ritual or habit or find something that really does pump you up? Something that you really love. Maybe if you're like me and like something that would pump me up is I love my cappuccinos. I have this filled with water because we're doing a conversation. And so I don't want to dry out my throat or my mouth. And I've already had one today. Um, and so like a, a little treat for me is having a second one. So maybe you can set up some treat for yourself that you only are allowed to do when you are doing the photos. So maybe it is a show you like to watch on Netflix, but you only get to watch that show when you are scanning the photos or a special second cappuccino or, you know, a glass of wine, whatever it is, a, a song that you really like, a playlist you really love that you just get to then have a little bit of a dopamine hit of fun structure, you know, followed with and going along with the thing that feels like it's going to be difficult. But once you do it, it's so much easier. How does that feel? Well, I love that. I'm already kind of doing that, that I only watch the one, this one show on Netflix while I am eating lunch because I usually eat lunch by myself. So I'm like, oh, this is my nice little treat. It's lunchtime. I get to watch my show. So maybe just kind of saying, hey, you can watch an extra one if you use those 20 minutes to actually scan the photos, you know, at the same time. So that is something that definitely motivates me. One of the other things you mentioned as far as like getting my parents help I think sometimes we forget that we can enlist others to kind of help us, you know, with that motivation. So like talking to my husband, because I am um, I'm an obliger in Gretchen Rubin's four tendencies. Yes, so like I too. need, yeah, the <laughs> external accountability. So for him to say, hey, just curious, did you do your photo scanning for the week? 
and then it could be like, oh no, or and he'll in the kind way, we've been married, you know, 15 years. <laughs> he'll, he'll be like, yeah. okay, well, this is important to you and you really want this for Christmas. So I think it's okay, depending on your personality, to be able to enlist some of that external accountability. And I know you and I do that Absolutely. with our communities, but sometimes it's hard to remember to do that for ourselves. Like we need totally. the accountability too. Yes. Absolutely. And then my next point was going to be set it up to where it's easy for you to do it. Right. So is there something that's in the way? Right. And I know this is going to be temporary for you. I know you don't want to have this project out forever, but is there a way for you to set it up so that the project is easily accessible? So you're not having to dig it out of the closet every time. Um, you know, the cord for home oh, thumbs up. The cord is set up, you know, to the scanner, right? There's no issues between scanning to your computer. Your computer is cleared off. You have a dedicated space to put the photos. You know exactly what your naming structure is going to be. I am the PTA treasurer and I have a notes folder for myself. I have a little, you know, I use notes on my Mac and I have one note that has all my little prompts that I have to do. So like if I'm making an, a ledger account, like a description in the ledger. I just copy it and paste it in there. I don't have to retype it out every single month when I do it because then one, it's consistent. And two, it takes me one second versus 10 seconds to type it. And so are there little things like that that you can do for this project that will make it easier? So walk through those steps, kind of figure out what it is, and then really be like, okay, I know that I don't want this giant crate here next to my desk forever, but for two months, I'm going to leave it here so that I have easy access when I have a couple extra minutes. If I'm set up for a podcast interview and I'm here 15 minutes early, I can just scan a couple of pictures, right? Because it's right here, easily accessible, and I have a couple extra minutes. Or after my interview, hmm. I'm going to take a couple minutes and just scan three photos real fast. You know, whatever it is that makes it a little bit easier, if it's accessible, I think that will help you a lot too. Yeah, I definitely love being able to set your environment up for success and make it as easy as possible. And the good news is that I do have that, like the photos are right near the desk, clear space, have the scanner ready to go. Love the idea for the naming convention. I hadn't really thought through that yet. So that's fairly easy to do. And I have like file folders, I guess, of each person it's done by person. And then like yeah. chronologically uh, to the best of my ability. So I do have it set up. I think it's just that number one, I haven't really talked to anyone yet until today <laughs> about like, I want to get this done. And it's important to me. Yeah. And sometimes just the act of being able to share it with others, like this is important. I want to get this done because can you support me? What does it look like? Can we talk through how to reverse engineer it? Sometimes I can really help you with the motivation too, not to just have it in your own brain. And then you feel bad every day that goes by that you don't end up doing it because as I've mentioned, procrastination is a major issue for me and it always has been. So I think these are great. And I guess one other point would be just sort of like, let's say I have that on the calendar. I have my song ready or my Netflix ready. And then, you know, you get the call from the school and um, your kid's yep. sick and well, can't do this today. Sometimes those derailments can, depending on the person. And for me, sometimes I can get back into it and be like, okay, it's great. I just have to set it for another day. Other times those derailments feel a little bit harder to come back from, especially when it comes to maybe a decluttering or organizing project. Do you have any suggestions for like how to get back on track and to kind of get back in that motivation flow uh, when life happens? Yes. I like to tell myself about the progress that I did make, right? Because I feel like somebody like myself and sounds like for you as well it's this all or nothing. You start to have this all or nothing. Well, I didn't complete it. So why should I even try? Like I didn't get to my goal. Ugh, that was a failure. That would be how, you know, I struggle against that thought in my head. So I understand these derailments. And the problem is they happen all the time. Like 
I talk about this roller coaster and I feel like it is this roller coaster of like, I had a really good day. Hmm, today's probably not going to be as good, but I try not to say that to myself. I say, well, I had a good day yesterday. Today might be a good day too, instead of talking that negative out. So I think when this happens, we also need to mother ourselves, right? We need to parent ourselves. And what would we say to our child? Like if our child was having a bad day or something really wanted, we'd say, well, there's always tomorrow. And we're going to say that same thing to ourselves. Well, you know what? It didn't go as well today, but how well did it go? Did you get any of it done? Okay. Well, can we move, you know, how can we now shift around and using these little reward cues in the beginning, right? These little motivators at the beginning is what will really help you get past that little dip, that doom gloom. And maybe you set up extra little things that when that doom gloom hits, you say, okay, I'm actually going to leave. I'm going to go for a walk around the block and clear my head. I'm going to remove myself physically, mentally from whatever is happening right now. If you can, of course, if your child's home and they need you to be there, please stay with your child. (laughs) Um, But is there something you can do? Can you say, I'm going to put on a five minute meditation and just sit here and breathe. Can I do something that disrupts the current state of affairs? And I feel like that's the best thing for me to be able to jog myself out of those moments where I'm like, okay, universe, why did you do this to me? And so I think that can really help, um, to have these moments of like, when I'm having a down, what can I do to help myself snap out of it? No, that's really helpful. I love, I always do forget to reward myself or to also remember how far I've come. And I have been part of a monthly coaching program for about four years. And one of the things I love, even if I don't do anything with the planner for the whole month, I go through my month and I actually review like the things that I've done and the books that I've read and places we've gone as a family and work I've done on my projects and clients and podcast interviews like this one. And it makes me feel like, oh, you know what? I actually did accomplish something. And to your other point about modeling how we're talking to ourselves, especially with our children, my oldest will talk to himself, not kindly. And, you know, as a parent, you think like, where, where is he, that coming from? Like, where is he learning that? And then my husband's like, you know, that you'll audibly say, Emily, like, oh, I'm such an idiot. And I don't even notice it, which is the problem, yeah. but our kids, they notice. And so I've really been very careful when things kind of don't go as planned for me to try to model that flexibility and resilience and, and be very careful about how I'm talking to myself, because I want to make sure that my kids know, like, Hey, like things are not going to go as planned most of the time. This is what we do about it. Yeah. Our do- my, our daughter and I had this thing going over the summer. Um we both say sorry a lot. Like we always say, "Oh, sorry," even though there's nothing to be sorry about, just that kind of knee jerk reaction woman thing. And so I really want to get her out of that habit. And so I thought, well, I'm going to have to get out of that habit too. So now we call each other on it. Whenever we hear the other one say it, when it's not an actual, I'm really sorry I did that. Like it's a, when it's a knee jerk reaction, we call each other on it. And she gets so embarrassed because um, she's 11 that I'm like, okay, your penalty when I say it is that I'm going to sing out, sorry, I'm not sorry. Like, and she's like, oh my gosh. And she just cringes and she's like, okay, well, your penalty when you say it is I get to tickle you. And I'm like, perfect. Cause I hate it. And she tickled, like, especially when we're out and about. And so I'm like, okay, great. And there have been times. <laughs> where it happens. Um, but we definitely are much better at it now. So it's been really fun kind of using these little motivation tactics, uh, to help us break some bad habits. I love that. And I have plenty (laughs) of things that my kids and I can probably come up with. So I love that so much. And just thank you. I'm feeling not only a feeling motivated, but Deanna, I'm just putting it out there to everyone. This is happening. I am checking in with you. My parents are going to have this as a Christmas gift. You heard it here first. (laughs) So thank you. And please tell everyone how they can best connect with you. 
Yeah, well, come find me. I'm at wannabe clutter free. So on Instagram, and that is the name of my podcast as well. And it's my website as well. So you can't miss me. Wanna be like the Spice Girls song, clutter free. Great. Well, thank you so much, Deanna. It was so great chatting with you. Thanks, Emily. Glad I could help. Have a great day. You too.